Um, <laughs> are there any uh, items that, uh, or does anyone have a motion to add any items to the agenda tonight? I wanted to just add a uh, pictorial postmark update. Okay, I'll put that on. We can do. We can deal with that with uh, regular business. And, and we'll be talking about the calendar. I have some add-ons for the calendar, but whenever you slip that in, in the meeting, just let us know. Let me know. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm just going to take a break here for a second and see if I can hook up now. Okay, now I have to find Kelly somewhere down in my email to get the connect. I don't know where are you? <laughs> there you are. Kelly, you're always so good about sending out the meeting. Appreciate yeah, I love it. Thanks very much. I think we're going to make it, folks. Oh, that's good, Peter. But we would have we would have survived on the phone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enjoy uh, with audio. Ta-da. Yes. How's that? I just hung you up. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you called me. I was, I was trying to figure out how we're going to get in touch with them to tell them I'm offline. Anyway, uh, first order of business then is going to be uh, approval of past minutes. Uh, everybody got my email from before earlier today. I'm sorry I didn't get to it before, but we have uh, three sets of minutes to approve. Uh, one was from November 28th. That's the uh, meeting that I missed, so we had to scramble and put together uh, the minutes from Carolyn's notes and uh, some discussion. But uh, anyway, I sent those out to you uh, after it was done on, on December 12th. And then we have the minutes from December 12th and we have the minutes from January 9th. Do you want a separate motion for each one, Peter? Yeah, I think so. They came out that way. So if, if you okay. want to... Uh, I'll make a motion to... for November 28th. It's Carol. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Or aye. Hand. Aye. Okay. December 12th. I will make that motion to approve those minutes. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And minutes from January 9. You want I will to make, make that motion? motion? Yes, okay. I will make that motion again. Okay, hey, Jerry, can you turn that? Somebody want to second the motion? I'll second it. I'll second it. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's. I will forward all of those as finals to Alex for um, posting and, and record. Um, first item on the first uh, item on the agenda tonight is items for time capsule. Um, I'm not sure where. Oh no. I'm, What's happening? I still have, we still have you, Peter. There we go. Okay. Well, I didn't have me. <laughs> I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Um, so we got the first item on the agenda is the time capsule items to put in it. I presume that's what it's for. Um, Chris, you're on the line. The time capsule has been made. Is that correct? You're on mute.
The um, the metal box, which was shown at the Jubilee, has been fabricated and is in town hall. Um, we haven't pursued the outer um, synthetic box that would be through um, through Pelican products. Okay, but that the and the box is the dimensions that we had yeah. talked about before. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got a relatively small box. Uh, how far back do I have to get? It's something like that like that. I mean, it'll hold fairly large objects and, and paper easily. Um, well, I don't know if anybody has any suggestions about content or do we, it, would it work better just simply to uh, frame a way that people could make suggestions about what they'd like to add to it and just keep a running list and then maybe decide at the end or I don't think I want to, you know, be like Sunderland and get to the end and have a baseball bat and, a, and prophylactics to put in it. But um, that, that may be the, the, the West way, the best way to go is, you know, um, hey, Rocky, you don't, uh, you're, uh, you're on mute, but you're not an active member of the steering committee, but how would you like to take charge of soliciting or receiving a list of things that people would like to put in it and reporting back to the steering committee. Sure. Sure. I can do that. Okay. But so we, I can... thought we voted you on. No. We... Oh no, you wanted us to wait. Okay. Okay. But I, I, I think this is that dragging was... me in slowly. Okay. Well I only grabbed one leg this this week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I think that we can put out a notice that if, if people want or have suggestions for what to add to the time capsule, uh, that they can get a hold of Rocky. Would that be all right? Do you want to do it directly or do you want to set up something through the 350th web? No, they, they can contact me directly. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you give us your... My your, email. I'll give you my email. Yeah. R. Foley. 8439 at comcast.net. Um, Excellent. Could you just repeat that just to make sure Peter's got it? Yeah, R Foley, F-O-L-E-Y, 8439 yep. at comcast.net. Got it. Thank you. And Kelly, could you start forwarding uh, Stuff to me too, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, I think that's a good idea because when I spoke to other towns about what was in the time capsule, it was a wide range of stuff. There seemed to be no um, really central theme. It was just what people wanted mm -hmm. uh, at the time. So I, Rocky, I think that would be wonderful if you would just be the collector of the ideas. Sure, no problem. Between now and then, if Stan can give uh, Rocky one of those uh, Deerfield glasses, that could be one of the first things to go into it or part of the collection. Now, the, I, I guess part of the question is, do, you, do they want, uh, are we looking just simply for ideas right now rather than try to- I think we should- a repository? Yeah, I think we yeah. should get- I think we should just collect ideas at this point. Okay, and then we can worry about becoming a repository because at okay. at some point the 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 whole thing will be more or less finalized. So rather than collect them somewhere, we can start collecting. Whoever has the time capsule can That's begin to manage them and add them right right to the time capsule. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yes, Dan. Sorry, I butted in. The time capsule. As soon as they removed a lot of junk chairs from the town hall, I believe we're going to set up a table and put the time capsule right next to the um, oh, that in the corner there by the handicap wrap. But yes, that's you. The chairs are still there. So we have, it will to, be we have to move them. Yeah. Right. We, we're going to move them. We already. We already, the select board already said we we're going to move them out. Right. Either 
take them to the land, uh, you know, to the transfer station or someplace. I don't know. But we're, we're moving them out, Stan. If you let me know when it's done, I can always get a hold of like Alex and I, we can, you know, put on a table, I can put a tablecloth on it and put it on display. And I would like a little notice as to what it is about Mr. Decker, the Franklin County School, and another one that says, please do not touch because it can be sharp edges that I want to cover the corners of the seal with that okay. blue masking tape, if you don't mind. Nope, that's fine. That's fine. I think it would be good if we could circulate um, the dimensions of this so that people don't come up with things that can't fit in it. Right. Yep. I think it's probably 18 by 18 by 18. I'm not sure. Something on that order. I think it is. Yes. I think you're right. It's either 18 by 18 by 18 or 18 by 18 by 12. It's one of the two. I can't remember which one. But we can look it up. But that, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Well, we can post. Um, Kelly, perhaps we can just post an item on the 350th just to announce the fact that we've got a time capsule and we're soliciting ideas from any member of the community of what they would like to add to the time capsule and then provide Rocky's uh, email address and then you can coordinate that for a while, Rocky. And if it becomes, the stack becomes too big, uh, we can start culling through it of things we might want to add or not add, but uh, that's a pretty good size container. Yep. Okay, any other items or any other suggestions in terms of a time capsule? I think, I think that's a way to go anyway. All right, moving on. Uh, fireworks update. All I have is an address or something. <laughs> well, uh, the date has been officially changed with DCR. DCR to this point has not, still not said yes or no. Um, we are not going to do drone surveillance of the birds. Um, when I spoke to Audubon, they were really upset that we were even thinking of that because it would disturb the birds. So we're gonna have to figure out some other way to work with, um, I, don't, I don't know. Hopefully the birds will nest early um, we're supposed to have cold snap this weekend, and then there's a cold snap the end of February, supposedly, and then um, it's supposed to warm up. So maybe the birds will nest early, and maybe they'll be gone. But anyway, we are still going to work on it. We're going to start talking to Joe Comerford's office and Natalie Blaze's office pretty soon. It's just I'm trying to work through DCR as as you know, as nice as possible at this point before we start getting cranky. That's that's about it. Yeah, my understanding is the birds leave the nest between um, late May and late June. So if we're on the 17th, um, it probably will not be what Tom Riccardi terms a disruptive, premature leaving. Even if they left, they're leaving just a few days early. It's not like they're leaving a few weeks early. Right. And... When I talk to Tom, we're going to, you know, I've been in touch with Tom. And so we're, we're going to work as, as best we can together. And hopefully this will get done. Otherwise, um, I don't know what you have as an alternative site, um, Chris, but I almost think maybe we can work with the South Deerfield Water Department or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we didn't pursue alternative site because we were waiting for this critical month of January to see if we'd get feedback. And plus there were a couple of snows that happened. So that kind of, um, you know, dampered things coming down from Vermont. Um, but I think at this point, I just contact them. I start drafting and signing a contract and with the provision that in the spring, we'll look for alternative sites. Yeah. Things are going hopefully, south. Yeah. Cause hopefully We'll know when the birds nest, and that would indicate when they would leave. So I, I, I'm hoping that this will be a yes. Um, there are a lot of people that are excited about this, so hopefully we'll just chug away here. I, you know, this is no different than DOT saying no to us about for the cake. 
you just, you know, you have to be persistent, and not give up. Well, except so, there's not endangered species driving along the road. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> just be, just people. <laughs> I know. I know. But, but so put it on the agenda for next month. Hopefully I'll have a little bit more information. All right. Well, that's not a problem. I was just, uh, we, we cover the bases in the meeting and move on. Oh, the friends, uh, of Deerfield, friends of Deerfield is going to go ahead and, and put together a contract. Okay. For the 17th. Yeah. And so, so the, okay. So we had this discussion before about rain dates because you, in Massachusetts, you cannot set up or fire fireworks if it's raining. And so that's different than Vermont and New Hampshire. So I guess the alternative would be to the 17th would still be preferred Friday the 16th or Sunday the 18th. In the, in, in the, in the, we did Friday as the first alternative and Sunday as the second alternative for the previous weekend, but I wanted to make sure that it's still the same. I'm wondering, Adam, uh, what do you? What's your opinion on maybe we should because Monday is Juneteenth Day, and it's a holiday. Do you think Sunday would be a better choice for us rather than that Friday night? I mean, I have no idea. I mean, better for <coughs> the police department or better for the community? I. Well, I'm just thinking as you as a, a person that would. You know, would you do a barbecue out in your backyard because you would have, you know, prime seat? I, I would. I would love to, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, if you were not so, working, uh, would you rather have a Sunday night rather? Than I would Friday? rather have the the first. I mean, I would rather have the Friday night, but um, I think you can go either way with the Monday holiday. But okay. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a strong opinion on that. I think, um, you know, there's there's more to come as far as from a police department standpoint. Um, it depends on how much we're going to need to support other events throughout the weekend where um, where that would fall. Um, the parade's been great. We've talked to them. We have a pretty good idea on that. Um, but what type of coverage we're going to need between the parade and fireworks if all on the same day. And then if we're going to need to support a chicken barbecue in Old Deerfield on Sunday, and then the fireworks are spread out. Also just thinking about man hours and days. Um, you know, that's that would in, in hours. So if you had you know, you have the parade and that's done at four and then you have a gap until the fireworks. And if they are on Sugarloaf, you know, you one long day and then you have to then assist with parking and support the event on the other day. So you kick it off early Friday night. If you have rain showers, I don't know. OK, so I guess it doesn't matter, Chris, whatever you want to do. I think we'll go with um first choice for a rain date is Friday. And then if we get inclement weather for two or three days, we'll have to go to Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Not everybody gets Juneteenth off either. Yeah. It's a holiday That's for true. everybody. That's true. Thank you. So if I, I agree with Chris, Friday sounds better. Okay. Then let's, let's put that down as the first choice. Okay. Any other part of this to, uh, to discuss for the fireworks. I think we're heading in the right direction and uh, Chris is closing the gate. So that's good. Um, Adam, are you gonna talk about police coverage or is it, what's the, uh, I'm not sure what the content of the item here, police coverage is. That, that was a Holly. Uh, entry and I think it was just referring to what Adam just talked about, which was the after events police coverage for the weekend. Yeah, minus I mean, the I parade. With, I met with the parade committee um, on Zoom last week. Lori and I, or Holly and I, have met a number of times. Um, you know, pending their approval of their permitting, 
we have a pretty good idea of how we're going to have to staff it, what areas the parade committee can staff with volunteers and signage. Um, it's still going to be somewhat labor intensive. Um, so I think we have a pretty good handle on that. And then it's a lot of question marks about how much we're going to have to support other events not just limited to that weekend, but I mean, I've heard rumors of events on Founders Day. Um, and, you know, we just kind of need as much advanced notice as we can have, depending on the size of what you're doing, um, where you're doing it. Um, you know, the chief's very busy and, but I do have, have his ear. So, you know, if there's plans or people have stuff, just come to me. Um, and then I can run it by him and we can get back to you and um, get input. So we're up to speed on stuff and what we've seen in the past that has worked and what hasn't worked. So we can best support whatever the plan is. So you'd be the go-to person at the police department. So whatever the event is, whether it's a parade or something else, we should be talking we can go through you to you to find out if what support might be needed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's what I do. It's part of, you know, the, the sergeant's jobs is, that are divided up, but event planning really should be on my business card. I mean, I work with all the private schools for years. I mean, you know, from foreign dictator coming, you know, uh, into DA to Eagle Brooks 100th <laughs> last year to, DA doing, you know, we do that Yankee Candles events. So, you know, I deal with, you know, with all of that stuff um, every year. So this is just a little bit extra, but we'll, we'll get through it. So okay. we just want to be able to know how much outside resources, which are the toughest to get that we're going to need to support the weekend, because we have, you know, we have to have two officers 24, seven, 365, just to cover the shifts. So that's six shifts right there. We can only work 16 hours in any aggregate 24 hour period we don't want our people falling asleep we can and have nap tents. what's that we can have nap tents <laughs> yeah. so so um you know with changes in the inability to hire any part-time officers now coming up for three years our roster is shrinking and we do have some great dedicated people but um like i said it's with the parade and if there's events throughout the evening it will probably have to rely on uh, mutual aid partners um, as well. Just, okay. just where we are. So, um, well, as long as you're here, rather than set up a separate meeting, I'm I'm planning on having a number of speaking events at the high school on Sunday, so Sunday afternoon. Would you? Would we need any support there? I think people could park in the parking lot and simply go in. But no, no, and uh, I don't like I said. Um, you know, Frontier is a great, great place. I mean, if you think you're going to have a few hundred people at Frontier, I don't think you need to have any any support from us. Um, you know, I think when you get to, you know, road issues, road closures or events close to the road, um, you know, in parking, that's when it becomes more of a public safety concern. Um, and then when you get, you know, upwards of a couple hundred people uh, together, you know, and it, it also depends on if you're, you know, serving alcohol and you know or other stuff where where those types of concerns come into play okay thank you thank you i know hey. I, yeah. I did touch base with sue antonellis she said she's has no one doing anything she's completely not going to be involved with anything except for a bounce house on the parade day for kids after the fact so um like Actually, said, we're, I, I, the select board voted um, our last meeting to ask her to do like the uh, home day kind of um, events. So we we just haven't connected with her, Adam, yet. Yeah, and, and and the friends of Deerfield are talking to her about bounce house and wet. Yeah, and she's, she told me that she's committed to doing a, a bounce house and stuff. But as far as bands, barbecues beer and anything else she's not going to have anything to do with that so but we we would do the bounce houses that same sunday afternoon the 18th on, and, the, and, on, the, and, on the lawn outside the tennis pavilion at deerfield academy okay so now you the original idea that we were told was we after the parade there was going to be events near 
the town hall and the library and that hadn't been decided. So all that is off and not going to happen. So, I mean, we're, we're really trying to do all this. And I, I told uh, Carolyn that we'll officially be on the select board agenda for the 8th of February mm -hmm. to say what we came up with and what commitments we got from everyone in terms of volunteers, committees, funding, et cetera. Um, and then that's when we would come back to you, Adam, too, and say, okay, this is what we have going yeah, on no, up in old Deerfield. And, um, and, and it'll be well-defined because we have a concept of, um, and I know this is new business up here, but we have a concept of potentially a chicken barbecue with 500 people up there. Mm -hmm. And, but in three different seatings for meal times of like 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. And the whole thing running from 12 noon to 8 p.m. So we will need help from um, first responders to manage, you know, the parking and in and out, in and out, because I mean, there's enough parking there, but it's just a matter of people turning around and getting out when people are coming in, right? And on the lower level, we're talking about the lower level at Deerfield Academy. Mm -hmm. So, so, but we we first wanted to get everything defined and where things that might be set up. And then come back to you and say, here's here's a sketch of exactly how we'll utilize this acreage around the pavilion. Yeah, no, no, that's good. And, you know, we look forward to working with you on that. I mean, uh, Deerfield Academy, uh, you know, their biggest challenge is parking. Um, so, you know, we've worked through events with them with that amount of people. Um, so I'm not saying it's, it's definitely possible, but, you know, uh, have to plug plug them there security staff is is a good resource for actually parking the cars and making them fit they know how to do it they do it the police we don't we can support them we mostly do public way stuff and i would say with that amount of cars we're probably gonna have to do some public way stuff uh but you know if possible um uh, if it's something and then i know with and i'm not saying that we're not capable parking cars, but um, if they can either bill you for some of their security staff, I would just recommend, you know, they're, they're definitely um, the ones that are better and we can, we can support them. We can, um, we can do the entrance exit, stuff like that. Um, you know, but feel free to reach out. You have my email, we've emailed back and forth and we can we can talk about whatever you you think you may need. Adam, yes, Rocky. Um, we're going to try and get the information out as quick as we can to you. But what? How far out do you really need uh, this information so you can do scheduling and everything? It, it depends. If it's you know if like it, like I said if if the parade looks like there's going to be between 12 and 20 officers so we're going to probably try to fill that or know where we're going to need to go with that like 30 days in advance okay but that, that also comes down to how much you can do with volunteers and uh how much we can we we definitely and how much mass dot is going to want mass dot is going to possibly say, come back to us with that permit and say, we're not comfortable with two people on 116. We're not comfortable with one person at Sugarloaf Street in 116. We're not, so they may, they may also come back and say, we want you to rent barricades. We want crash trucks. There's a lot of stuff that we, that Kevin and I talked about when we submitted the permits that they may come back to us or if they deny them, we may have to bolster some of that stuff. Um, you know, obviously we have cost, you know, we have public safety in mind first, but also we have not a ton of people and we definitely don't want to just have extra people to cost more money. So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to drive up the bill in any, any means, but there are some things, you know, like West street, King Phillip, Snowberry, all those intersections that are dead end streets, I was perfectly fine with the chief's fine with. Can you have a volunteer there? Can you have barricades there? So when you start adding up every intersection between 
from the Mass DOT depot to Pelican, there's quite a few intersections. You know, when we do the Memorial Day parade, we usually do six to seven people to make it smooth and make it safe. So when you add that out, then you have a two hour time frame and it's a Saturday and there's all kinds of other stuff going on and we still have to, you know, there's still, so that that's where, you know, we look at like, you know, 12 will probably be sufficient, but if we can't, if you can't have, if there's not volunteers. And then the other thing is, you know, we want to keep things flowing. So we have it staffed at Conway street, if we're going to use frontier. So the people that are in the parade, the trucks can leave and pull out onto five and 10. That's another spot where, you know, if you didn't have the manpower or really short on funding, would you want to staff that or not? These are all conversations that Holly and I have had, but in order to ensure that everybody leaving is getting out on a five and 10, so it's not having a ripple effect back through town. These are all considerations that we have to try to make the parade a very smooth event. Okay. But the short answer for, for that, I mean, if it looks like we're going to have 500 people at DA for, for the chicken barbecue and bands, you know, we want to know the plan so we can, we can make suggestions, you know, as much in advance as possible. We understand things change all the time, but, you know, if we look at it and say, all right, we're going to need a couple of guys for four hours and in a couple of guys for eight hours, we can, we can work with that versus, you know, and then the fireworks are our wild card. I mean, we had a bunch of people come into town for the Yankee candle ones. There was some issues um with trap but it's also a short period of time too it's you know fireworks last for an hour but it's whatever else goes along with it if there's other things so to speak that prolong it okay thank you adam i i think we're going to be able to gel some of this together uh at the february 8th Selectman's meeting with Chris, and we can sort out. I mean, the select board wants wants to do something. We just don't know what the transition was, and we just thought Susie should do um, old home day kind of stuff that that weekend versus, you know, another weekend or another, you know, some other events. So, and we, you know, voted a budget of I think sixty five hundred or something like that. So we want to make sure that she has you know, whatever she needs to work with. And so we'll talk with Chris and the friends of Deerfield on the 8th, and we'll try to figure out a more solid plan. So you have more indication of what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. And Chris, if, you know, if DA can't, you know, or don't, doesn't want to, we can definitely have people do, you know, help with car parking, even on their property. But, um, you know, we just want to make sure that there's a conduit of communication and that we that everybody that's involved in whether it's this event or any events in the in the future that we're here to to help um in any way that we we can yeah and, and stan is meeting with um deerfield academy this week and the issue is they finished their reunion weekend the weekend before mm -hmm. and i don't think they start their summer program so there may be an issue with some of their staff just taking time off right oh absolutely so they're that's, they're that's i mean they're going to try to figure out they're absolutely understaffed and they're just like everybody else. And they are out straight from usually about May 20th, right through that June 15th. Um, they put a lot of demands on their staff, both physical plant, uh, dining and, you know, security and safety department. All those weekends, there's events, you know, basically kicks off usually right around my birthday until right around the middle of June when school gets out. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, okay for 350th events to the steering committee. Any clues, Kelly? Uh, yeah, that was a Holly one, but I think you kind of answered that because the steering, um, I mean, it's going to the select board, right? Any of future events, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's just, I don't, you know, it's so in flux as far as what people wanted to do. So I think, We'll just talk with Chris and see what what the friends of Deerfield want to do for that weekend on Sunday, and then we'll try to fill in what we can do between the parade and the fireworks. Um, as far as you know, activities, maybe we can have a band. Maybe we can do something else. 
behind the Tilton Library. Maybe the Tilton Library would do some kind of fundraiser that weekend. You know, maybe we can get them to do something as an event, um, you know, support the library event. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I feel like we should coordinate stuff, though, and that, and that we'll come together pretty soon. Diane, do you have some ideas? Uh, well, I've got a few little things. Um, the DA uh, event, maybe that should be called the Dear, a 350 celebration. Uh, if you've been on Facebook, sounds like the day of the parade. The Polish club is, it's sort of evolving, but that one's sounding like the all class class reunion. So one would be the class reunion at the Polish club. I, I've been watching it grow on Facebook and which is really good that people are taking the incentive to do something, but that is, that seems to be happening. So the one at DA, just a DA celebration. Uh, and then lastly, Carolyn, how's the Liberty lot going? <laughs> I told you I'll be, the I, know. I have I to be. The and, I, and I love it, can. but I'm, 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 I just, I bugged Tim every Tim Hilchie's in the point person on this. So we're hoping, I don't know what we're going to, I don't know where we're going to be truthfully, but we're going to have it so you can park the whole place. And I hope that we can exit out. It won't, I don't know if it will be completely done, but we hopefully the land. We're going to do have, food trucks or something like that. Right. So You'd people like can to have an area. Exit, right. They can exit out onto Elm Street from the Leary lot. We'll have that sorted out at least, I think. Right. We will have the land swap done. I I have no idea why it takes so long, Diane. And you know this. I was the Leary lot last year. We were talking about this yeah. last year. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, get done. it's gonna get done. So don't worry. Put it on the agenda for next month. Okay. <laughs> Chris, if, if, Chris, if you were at the select board meeting, taunt them for me, please. Yeah. What's that? If you're at the select board meeting next week, taunt them and tell them we're waiting on the Leary law. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> Carolyn, let the, it, do I understand it though? In terms of the Leary law, it's available for parking. Yes. Regardless of whatever else happens we can either we can either um you know cordon it off so you can do activities on the leary lot or you could just we can have parking there it's just i'm not sure if the parking lot itself will get done um but okay. hopefully the but land the physical transfer, space will be available yes that's ours already that is already available you can that already park nice. there yeah and then the other the other question i would have is uh, does the town is is the town going to keep it mowed? Will it be in that kind yes. of shape? If okay, it's not, so. if, it's, if we don't have it under construction or done, it will be mowed. Don't worry. Okay. I promise I'll harass Kevin Scarborough to death. <laughs> if it's a giant mud pot, mud mud field, we'll do a marble tournament. Well. <laughs> Good. Well, no, there's grass there. It's, that doesn't really get to it get. There's a couple puddle places, but okay, so we're it, good. Uh, yeah, okay. there, in general, it's. I mean, it is a salon. It's flat. Right. Yeah, we can mow it. We can mow it. All right. Yeah, we can. We can just invite kids to come with their rubber boots, and it can be a mud stomp. <laughs> no rain. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know that at least it's ours and it's flat. It'll oh yeah, no, it's ours, and we should okay. be able to exit. I'm, I'm sure the land swap will be done by then, and we can exit out onto Elm Street. So, um, you know, we'll have a a fifty foot right away out to Elm Street. Great. That we can use. Uh, local news station. Does was there a message or a request from somewhere? That was Holly, and I have no context for that one. I'm not sure what what she wanted to get out of that one. Okay. I know I've gotten several calls uh, from news stations that actually found out that I was on TV one night. Mm -hmm. The reporter never told me that uh, I, it was being recorded. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> but anyway, it wasn't very well done. If I thought about it or prepared beforehand, I, it, 
could have been a little smoother. But I think as we get further into this, um, there, there are bound to be news outlets, whether it's TV or the press, uh, the newspapers that are going to want information about uh, uh, the events coming up. Um, Peter, actually, yeah. I had posted a picture of the cake and the person from, I believe it was reported at a 22 News. I yeah. just posted a picture of the cake and uh, they came back asking to talk to somebody. And yeah. I, to which I went, oh no, what did I do? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> turned it over to, to the committee to see if uh, you, perhaps Peter, could be the spokesperson or something. I, I have the contact emails from somebody from 22 or, you know, we could, I guess, discuss yeah. it. Oh, well, I think we like have, it. yeah, I think as we have events coming up, I mean, we could probably should be proactive and get a hold of the free press and uh, some of the stations to be advertising rather than have them find out about events and then come back to us for more information. Yeah. 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 To that end, we, um, are putting in our budgets for that weekend of the 17th and 18th press outreach and what that might cost to do advertising. So we have line items in our budget for that. Good, good, all right. Um, I can give you uh, Duncan from News 22's phone number. Do you want that, Peter? So you can call yeah, him? Sure, sure. Uh, it's 616-888-0188. And it's Duncan. What's his last name? I don't know. I don't. Just Duncan. And he's from Channel Twenty Two. Yes. Okay. Maybe it, I don't know who Diane spoke to, but he's the one that. There was somebody at Twenty Two also, Kaylee Thomas or something, perhaps. I'm not well, sure. Well, just her. just call Duncan and ask him to connect yeah. you with someone, so no. that you can talk because they they honestly don't have that many stories, truthfully. So, you know, <laughs> they can use this stuff for fillers. <laughs> I think Duncan is the one that covers the Franklin County. Uh, yeah. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. He's the one that always harasses me. So <laughs> harass him back. <laughs> no. And I and I think at least for some of what we're doing, we've got a pretty good relationship with. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Right, Chris Larrabee. Yes, Chris Larrabee is excellent. Yeah, he, so, he writes really good stories for the. Um, I mean, they're very accurate. Uh, so he's really good for the recorder. And yeah. so that I, uh, as long as you talk to him, um, he'll, he'll put whatever we want in the paper. Yeah, we've got a couple of, we, we got an article coming out through him um, pretty soon about some initiatives that we're undertaking historically. So projects, so yeah, good, okay. Um, we're now at the parade working group update. Um, does everybody have that or should I read through what Holly sent out in, in the email? That's a lot. I mean, I can just pass that along if you want. But. Maybe you can summarize it, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we met the postcards with the updated date went out to everyone that we had sent previous. Uh, we notified all the agencies, so Water Department, Kevin Scarborough, um, FCAT. We let everybody know. She reached back out to Shriners. They have a conflict, but they uh, said they could send a smaller contingency, so she's going to check on what that is. Uh, we need to look into an MC for the parade because the one we were going to get is no longer available. We've got 10 uh, received participants so far. Actually, that's 12, I think. I got some. And then she she mentions Adam on here, which I think he's already talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of uh, inquiries about floats in the parade. Should I just have them contact you or Holly? Yeah, we have a we have an email, which it's like Deerfield. Forgot what it is. Um, yeah, Peter, I'll uh, I'll send you the email and you can just send them to that Deerfield email. Okay, because historic Deerfield is talking about 
or at least people at Historic Deerfield are talking about getting a float together. Okay. Well, that's great. Great. They were on our list, but who knows who actually went to. Well, the, the Claire Carlson, who's in the education department, um, was on the um, 350th committee for Hadley. And she said they had a lot of fun with floats. So she's, I saw her at the Jubilee and, and she was pretty up for getting a group of her cohorts together to put a float together. Okay, so any other uh, items in there? I... No. I think we've, she sent them all to, to us. So if, if nobody has any questions, I'm going to pass then. Uh, we, we already have the information flow there. Okay. Um, that brings us to the working history group. Um, I've been working, trying to get a speakers program together. And I think we're getting pretty well set. I've got just about all but one month covered. We're going to do one a month uh, at Frontier. Uh, I've talked to the assistant vice principal, and we can use the auditorium on a Sunday afternoon at no cost. Uh, we'll have to cover, and I've talked to Chris about this, maybe the janitorial or um, the AV uh, someone to run the AV equipment there at the auditorium. And Chris also suggested that we could have a um, snacks and, and uh, um, afterwards to allow the group that attended the lecture to come and chat and, and explore things further. And they're fine with letting us use the cafeteria at no cost uh, as well. So if Chris can uh, set a range to do that, then, then we can uh, go along so we'll have both a talk and a reception with, with refreshments afterwards. Maybe we could get hold of the, um, the Deerfield Women's Club to do the refreshments each month. And it could be a fundraiser for them too. That's an idea. Chris, you want to say anything or? I, I'm not opposed to that at all, but I'm just throwing I, it out there. Yeah, I mean, Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down as a, as a possibility. Otherwise, we'd, you know, use a caterer just to get the refreshments. Well, we they just be delivered there and not staffed. We okay. staff. Oh, staff. maybe the two could work in tandem then. Yep. I mean, if the women's club can provide the staff, you know, just uh, and do a little cleanup in the end, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, make, and make sure some find a home for any extra food or beverage. Yeah, um, I I tell you what, I won't go over the the proposed talks right now. Um, I sent them to Chris earlier because we were talking about uh, having a reception and stuff afterwards. But uh, Barbara Matthews at Historic Deerfield, she's the public historian. Uh, Kevin Sweeney, who's Professor Emeritus from Amherst, historian. Uh, I'm going to give some some talks. Gary Sanderson's been exploring properties and lands uh, for early settlers right on through for years. And so he's on board. I had a three hour session with him the other day to uh, train him how to do PowerPoint. So um, I think we're between the four of us and any and other people that I may be able to bring in. I think we're we can at least have one reasonably good public presentation about Deerfield's history a month. When were you gonna start this, Peter? Uh, it start, well, it's actually starting in February, but I'm giving a talk in Northfield. Okay. Um, oh, so- that's on, the, that's on the 19th. Okay, so the 19th in Northfield. Yeah. Um, and and um, so it's, that's the third Sunday. Are you going to do consistent same date? Um, uh, it, 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 part of it depends upon uh, the calendar for the high school. Oh, okay. Um, 
I think the next one I, I'm tentatively scheduled for the 26th of March. Oh, I'm going, so to, I'm going to do a talk about the founding of Deerfield. Okay. And what and time? Eight, were, what time was this going to be, Peter? This would be. Um, they would be Sunday afternoons. There's a apparently a, a church that hires the auditorium in the morning on Sundays. So they, but they're supposed to be through at noon. So I thought two o'clock might be a good hour to have yep. the have the talk. Okay. And uh, then we could have refreshments and stuff afterwards. Okay, so two o'clock on the twenty sixth of March. Do you have a date? Yeah. For, do you and have a that, date for April yet? Um, I need to get a date, uh, but I, Barbara Matthews is going to give a talk. Basically, it's on how does um, how did Deerfield address the needs of Deerfield's poor? Okay. So it has to do with warning outs and poor houses and the laws and the, the night. It was not a great place to live in the night in the 17th, 18th, 19th century before public assistance came in. Uh, but it's the you should be thankful, Carolyn, because the major job of the selectmen before about 1850 was to they were also the overseers of the poor. Well, it went, okay. it went with the job. And I'll give you a little clue beforehand is that if you are a resident of the town, it was a town's responsibility to assist you. But there were always people coming into town that weren't residents. The town did not have to assist residents, non-residents. So if you're walking behind a, a wagon and the barrel falls off and it breaks your leg, the Deerfield would award would provide assistance for setting the leg, the doctor's fee. But they'd find out which town you were a resident of and then send a letter to that town demanding payment for the bill that the town had. Anyway, it gets very complicated and very interesting. Um, but I, I think it'll be a, a great talk. Um, but you don't you you don't know if it's the 23rd or 30th. I, I don't. Uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be looking. I, I just talked to Barbara today, so she's she's game. And um, I I think if you could make it the fourth, you know, since you started out the fourth or settle. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. A consistent date would be very good because then people would look forward to it. Okay. And and we can advertise it. You know, fourth fourth week. You know, fourth Sunday right. of the month. Right. You know, there's going to be a history talk or something like that. So if you, yeah. whatever date you pick, try to be just consistent so it can, we can get people to come. Yeah. Okay. So the, by the time we hit May, then we've got Founders Day. And I may try and work in some kind of talk at that point as well. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then, well, Diane, you, what, what were you planning for Founders Day? Weren't you thinking I, of some events? Uh, what's going on with the church? Is that church going to be available? Because I sort of stopped when I got hint that maybe I had to have an alternate plan. Well, let's plan on the church. Okay. I, don't know when the renovations are going to be doing okay. well, when renovations are going to happen truthfully all right i mean let me ask you this carolyn in terms of renovations what are they going to focus on is it going to be the sanctuary the big part of the church or is it going to be the community room and the kitchen and the offices and that's well, sort of well we have to stabilize we we want to stabilize the steeple first number one right. and then and shore up that kind of stuff. That's going to happen one way or the other pretty soon. We're doing that. The problem is Deerfield Academy is doing the renovations and they were supposed to do them last 
you know, last summer. And then I got pushed to the fall. Here it is winter. They promised they're going to start. You know, we, we really don't have a start date. So uh, the what they're going to do is do the rehab, the bathrooms. So they're handicap accessible because there's no handicap accessible bathrooms in there. Yeah. So if the bathrooms get done, which is a relatively quick deal. It's not like there isn't bathrooms there. They're just not handicap accessible. So right. you got to widen the doors, you got to widen all everything, but it, the basic stuff is plumbed. So it's not like you have to reinvent Sure. You will do a whole bathroom. So that should be relatively quick. We can then keep planning on that. Yeah. So so that we could have an event there with a handicap accessible bathroom, I would hope, by the spring, late spring. Okay. Um, the rest of the renovations really are, you know, need to be like chopped. We're taking the sanctuary and we're gonna put office space in there, stuff like that, you know, make it usable yeah. space. Yeah. It, it, it's a big empty area, you know, but the pews have to come out and then they have to do, you know, basic shoring up of the, of the floor. And, you know, I, it's, it's not major, major renovations. So. Uh, well, here's, we the, here's the thing. Up. Yeah. Here's the thing in terms of and, and Diane and I have been talking about the, the bell ringing and, and, and the other kinds of things that we had, you know, we really only need the foyer and part of the sanctuary just to seat people while they're waiting to do the bells. And other than that, we're not getting into the, the you know, the community rooms, the, the, the other parts of the church, even up towards, uh, you know, where the altar and stuff used to be. So even if, even if, I mean, hopefully the weather will be lovely, but, you know, cause it's spring. So some events could be, if we had to held outside, the tent, you know, for the seniors will be up. I'm not sure when in May that's going up, but that usually goes up. I don't know. When did we put it up last year? Adam, do you remember? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I believe it was, it was up before Memorial Day. Yeah. There was some, some challenges with, um, with it, but they got it up before Memorial Day. So. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, we'll have an outdoor tent, you know, uh, right there next yeah. to the. Well, the, the, I so, mean, the, two, the two things that we were really talking about is stringing. Diane was working with the, the teachers to for the kids to make bells. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to string 350 bells in there. But we do that from the from the second floor balconies across there. And nobody needs to walk in in there necessarily except to you know put those up and then the rest of it is managing the kids up and down the stairs to get into the to ring the bell that's all so it's really we could do that through the front doors yep i mean you can you can access the building i have all my emergency dispensing site uh equipment in there you know for our eds drive throughs and stuff yeah so i mean it's usable space there's nothing. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're okay. All righty. Yeah. All right. I just have one thing. I'm going to hop off the meeting here, um, but just we're, we're available. You know, I'm available to any committee that needs it. And if you need me back or want to have anything else, I can zoom on. Or um, like I said, Chris, I'll wait to hear from you. And um, we're, we're happy to support the 350th in, in any way that we can. Adam, I really appreciate that. And I'm sorry it doesn't seem like it's solid planning yet, but it's because there's so many moving pieces. No, I understand. We just want to get out ahead of it, make sure that everybody knows that we're we're here to support the event and you know offer input and you know um do do what we can. So yep. Thank you. All right, have you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Adam. Thank you. Um, Diane, do you want to say anything more about the Founders Day? Um, I have been in touch a few times with the school. They haven't gotten back to me. Um, I'm not worried about it. Um, as to what's going on, I do know that it is the 5th, which is a Friday, 
is a half day. It's on, I looked on two different calendars. It's yep. early release, both uh, high school and uh, DES. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll figure out what day we have the kids come over. Um, if they, if they're allowed to bring them to the church before before Founders Day itself. And I guess we'll just have to have it, we'll have another meeting and uh, figure out what we can do. I, I have to admit, Carolyn, we did have a meeting last week and then all of a sudden the whole floor thing came up and we were just sort of like, okay, what are our alternate plans? But uh, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. There's a lot going on, but I think we can adjust because there's a lot of also other resources. Like I said, the tent we put up for the seniors, um, okay. we can work with the library because the library will be wanting to hold some events. So the library can be support for this. Um, and and the Chris has been wonderful a story you know, walk or something. with the friends of Deerfield. So we just have to figure out what we want and then have a few backup plans for some of these inconvenience things that should have been done. Um, Chris, that might be a good event to uh, think about refreshments and stuff if we've got a bunch of kids on our hands. Yep, exactly. Or, or, uh, sticker, or stickers or something. You know. <laughs> there should be Not something that we can give out to kids. Yeah, I, little, you know, pins or stickers or something, something tangible, you know. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't fall apart. I know I had, I gotten a keychain. Um, I don't know if we can get to keychains, but, you know, just something the kids could have and hold on to. And not many parts. I remember when I used to get stuff for Frontier Football. Flashlights had too many parts, but the mugs and the little balls were always great. You know, that type of thing. You just, you know, and some kids go, I have these, I still use them. Well, anyway, can I ask uh, Peter, is Jay Stryker uh, going to do his talk uh, about the, um, the nuts and bolts? I haven't talked to Jay lately. I think he would be perfectly willing to do it. it it's a, uh, his wife is really kind of fading. So he's doing okay. full-time hospice work. Oh, okay. Already. Which is the reason we didn't do it earlier this year. <clears throat> We've already gone ahead and bought the brass. Okay. Uh, so we have the materials to do it. I'm just not sure what uh, physical and mental shape Jay's going to be in as we come into this, this year. Uh, right. you know, I hope all the best, but I, I, it, it's unclear at the moment. Um, aside from, yeah. I do, have, I do have something to add to the calendar. Uh, Tom Clark and I have been communicating. Uh, Saturday, April 22nd on Earth Day, he is going to host a um, orchard walk on his property up in the peach orchard. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. wonderful. But he hasn't, we, we're still working on the time, or he's still working on the time, but uh, enough communication to, to say, yes, I can announce it to you people that it's it's in the works. So Saturday, so, April the 22nd, that's birthday. a birthday. Yes. And, and it's a walk. Uh, yes, uh, and up, up uh, walk up to the peach orchard. Great, all right. Or orchard walk, however you want to present it. All right, well, you get, uh, we can certainly add it to the calendar and as we get yes. closer. Yes, yes, and the tractor super. parade, we don't have a date yet. We, uh, we're working with the September. But I realized of the two weekends that Jen and I were talking about, I think it was 17 and 24, um, 24, 25 is the craft fair. So that may float us either 17 or into October. I'm let Jen, I'm letting her deal with that and I'm gonna support her in whatever way. But um, um, 
I know that um, Tim Newman was talking to me about, I mean, this is just a little sidebar. He wanted, he was thinking of doing something in October um, with the Eastern European migration and, you know, beer fest kind of thing. Remember they did those, they did that for a few years ago. They did it in the 90s. They had a big program. Yes, yes. And so I think he was going to try to revive that for this year. Right. For sure, um, which is really exciting. Um, uh, he he hadn't. Uh, he's going to try to come to our next meeting, but he was outlining um, that kind of festival in for October. So I just wanted to let people know because um, you were planning different dates for things, but it would be kind of like the, along those lines. It would be after the craft fair for sure, but it would be one of those weekends in October that's still lovely. And, um, and, and it would be focused on Eastern European migration. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm working with them now to, as part of that. Uh, we're, we're, we've really begun to do some kind of nice work with the oral history program. We've got about 20 of those interviews done. Oh, but great. I've, been, I've been focusing on John Pekarski Oh, yes. And, and his family. So um, I'm not sure you can see this. If I back up far enough, you probably can. But that's, that's his genealogy. Oh, my goodness. And I've got 40 family pictures from the 1930s and the 50s. Uh, from John and so I've got a whole poster worked up with the the pictures and the and the genealogy and I've got a 50 page transcription of interviews that we've done with him talking about those pictures and I've been talking to his sister and then she's been talking to his aunt John's 80 so to have an aunt uh, is that's still alive is pretty interesting. So she's the last one of his father's generation. And she's in her 90s and lives up in New Hampshire. So I'm starting to get the whole family involved. And then I've been doing genealogy on ancestry. And I found two of his brothers and his sister in Pennsylvania, or of his great grandfathers. So anyway, wow. it's, it's, we're, it, it's snowballing. Diane has it. We're, we're, waiting for Diane's article to come out in, in Deerfield history. Uh, should be out within the next month. And uh, so as part of that um, immigrant program, I, I think we're, we'll have a lot to well, really contribute that. Yep. to that, you know, that type of program. The other thing is that uh, I'll tell you now is that PVMA is going to be the archive for all of this digital uh, oral histories, as well as the digital photographs and everything else. So as a repository, that, that will continue. And we just had discussions today about once they get there, uh, they're revising their um, internet uh, platform right now. But once that's done, then we can also interface with other uh, repositories and, and make that information even more widely available. That's, that's fantastic. So that's coming along. We're also, I got together a group of folks a couple of weeks ago, and we're at the point of uh, designing a, a program to actually help people do their own genealogies and their own record searches. You can do a lot of this stuff online. And so we're gonna be giving workshops on how to go about doing that. Peter, I think that's fantastic. I think you're gonna get a lot of interest for that. We need, really need to advertise for that. Yeah. Um, um, well, when we, when we get the material together and Marie's just started a project too in, uh, in terms of along those lines, she's going to be at the town hall Monday mornings and Tuesday afternoons 
to scan family photographs. And people know that? Do people know that? Supposedly the advertising has gone out. I don't know how widely yet, but. I okay. think I, I saw it on Facebook, on, uh, on the Deerfield Now site. Okay. Okay. Well, like I didn't even know about it and it'd be good if I knew about it because then I could put it, okay. you know, through I, us. So. Right. Yeah. It just started. Well, <laughs> it's just, it, today was the first day. Yeah. So, well, yeah. It, we'll, just, just want to remember everybody remember that we're already finishing up january here so we're in our 2023 year and so we want to make sure that people hear about all this stuff so we got to we got to really make solid our calendar here and get the get it out and have yeah. some kind of um I mean, yeah. at least on the select board level, we can announce that every every time we have a meeting, I can say, well, then the next week is this is what's happening. But we need to solidify this this calendar so that people and with are, descriptions and details too. Because yeah, just just enough so that people understand what 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 it is. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Because I lose every is everybody still you're fine, you're all fine out there in terms of Zoom. Yes. I'm getting this notice. I've got a blank screen that says Zoom. Yeah, no, we um, can still see you. Yeah, we can okay, still see you. Okay, well, if you can see me, I can't see all of you, so you can all you know, I have a question out or whatever. Um, do we uh, still have a link to FCAT to give uh, some of these uh, announcements to uh, to that yeah. that station? Oh, John, Jonathan is really good. We whatever we have, you have a link to him? Okay. Yeah, I have his email. All righty. Yeah. So Jonathan will put up anything. Schedule and, yeah. uh, well, I'll try and I'll, I'll, I'll try and do some more work on the calendar tomorrow and see if I can get this off to you, get these dates settled. Uh, the other thing is if you go down South Main Street in, to the pharmacy, uh, there's a display in the window uh, that was put up on Deerfield's 300th anniversary memorabilia. Stan, and thank you, Stan, for that. Yep, Stan and, and Marie, I guess we're, right. yeah. we're we're working on that. And we got a little more memorabilia today. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think that's uh, exciting. Then people will see it. Yep. So uh, I think I'm through with that. Uh, the working group um, update from friends, I guess. Uh, I guess you're on, Chris, if you want. I think we talked about it because of when Adam was on, et cetera, of what we're trying to pin down before the 8th of February. Okay. So, I mean, we're talking about Sunday to be a collaborative effort between the Friends of Deerfield, the Town of Deerfield Recreational Committee, Kathy Thomas Catering, and the Polish Club. Great. And so that, that's what you're talking about for the, you're going to have a meeting on the 8th for that? No, I'm going well, to report to the select board and tell you exactly what we've come up with. Okay, we're, we're we're using that as a platform to get our final organization out there. That's what we're trying to do. And then we would go live and sell tickets thereafter. Oh, great. Okay, so that's for February. That's, that's all I'm going to include in here right now. And then, good. Well, things are coming to things are coming to they're moving along. I'm. I guess our primary um, weakness right now is just letting people know, you know, because yeah. it is evolving. Well, maybe we should just figure out a way to get more, more notices out or something. Maybe at town meeting, how, we could probably, if Peter, if you want, we can try to get something to, to hand out at tan, town meeting when people go by. You know, yeah. Maybe and, something. Yeah. I mean, I've got a lot of, when's town meeting? Well, it's, the, it's, it's April, it's normally um, April 24th, but uh, what's going to happen is I think we're going to continue the meeting because the governor's budget is so late, it's not even going to come out till March. So we don't have the ability really to put our budget together thoughtfully. So I think we're going to continue it till June, the first weekend in June. So um, I mean, that hasn't been decided yet. We don't know for sure, but it's one of those other th the, one of the things that we've been talking about because strategically, 
you but you can't you rush to do your budget, but the state's impact on our budget is so so it has such a huge impact that you you can't our, our formulas whatever we're going to do can be adjusted and have to be readjusted many times based on what the governor's budget is going to do and what the house finally votes. So, and usually the the house is a little bit generous, you know house house two that budget from the legislature is a little bit more generous than house one, which is the governor's budget. But what happens is it, it goes back and forth and we don't get a final budget. And I think we're probably not going to get a final budget till the end of June, but we want to at least be in line with house one, which is the governor's budget. And if that doesn't come out till mid March or the end of March, I, you know, how, how we're going to make our decisions like the school budgets and stuff like that. That's tremendously um, in the air. So well, I was going to, I was going to say, I, I, I had a, a number of posters up at the Jubilee. And, and if you're having town meeting, I can bring those in Perfect. and I'll have other posters and stuff to. But I, th I, but I think, I think the end of April, even if town meeting happens on normal um, fourth week of April, what have you, it's too late for everything we're talking about. We need to get the word out there starting in February. Right. I, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I, we could use, I mean, Kelly's on social media. I mean, Kelly uses social media and Rocky can't, we can get it on Deerfield now. And you just need uh, to firm up dates. I feel like I don't have any information. I don't have right. dates. I mean, you got to really sell this to people. So we, we need something that'll draw them in. Peter, if you could nail down the, the your geology, you know, geology 101 kind of thing and, you know, all your workshops and stuff like that, if you could nail those dates down, that would be really huge because then we have it. Every month, there's at least one thing. And then we can put in the other things that Diane's working on. And Yeah, I should, I, I, I can certainly try and do that for the, for the speakers. Uh, the things like the workshops, though, I think it's going to depend upon the response to, do you want to even come? It's rather than, well, we'll see. I, it's... Well, we could have signups. You could say that there's limited. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, that if, if, if people, three people sign up, we may do one kind of workshop. If 20 people sign up, we may do another kind of workshop. And you know, it's. Well, if you have a, a sign up, that shows that there's limited, you know, limited availability. So let's have a sign up. We're going to do this. Yeah. You're going to do these workshops and, you know, sign up quick. You're going to lose well, the spot. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, and we can try that. I mean, Marie, Marie tried to do the same thing with sign-up sheets. Nobody signed up, but two people walked in with their pictures today. Yeah, I know. I know. So anyway, um, I, you know, I'll try and work on that from my, from my end as well. So. Um, Peter? Yeah. Um. In addition to doing uh, Kelly posting online or maybe FCAP, uh, maybe we should have something in, on paper, do a paper schedule of the dates that are permanent, um, a line or two as to what is uh, we're working on and a website to refer to and maybe leave a pile of them at, at Town Hall. I know at that table, they've got a little of everything, ice skating, senior walking and uh, COVID kits. So oh, maybe, yeah. we could, you know, put some, uh, if we could get to, you know, we can get together and do a schedule and print something and then just leave them there so somebody can grab and go and- uh, We can we can uh, drop uh, some off at the senior center. You know, if we have paper forms, we can drop them off yeah, at the, yeah. the seniors, mean, pass out to the seniors. I um, think the other thing that we can work, we can work with Chris Larrabee and, and ju just do an article of, this is, these are the upcoming events and put it, get it yeah. in the Greenfield paper. Yeah. Well, we need to update our website. So once I get those dates, I'll update, update the website and then you can advertise the website so people can refer back to that. Okay. Good idea. Good enough. All right. I think we're there. No, I had that one thing. Okay. One more. Uh, the pictorial postmark. Oh, yeah, I, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so um, I've been working with um, 
Robin, the Deerfield postmaster, she's been spectacular. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we filled out all the forms. She helped me. There's no postmaster currently in South Deerfield, but she's she's helping them. And so those will be submitted. She's come up with some ideas. She said we could have an event where the kids can actually stamp an envelope themselves. Whoa, we can uh, have yeah. a bunch of envelopes stamped. People can come in. There's all sorts of things we can do with it. Obviously, we're still on hold until it's 100 percent official but um it's it's moving along so once we have that a-ok then we can switch gears oh start. that's wonderful kelly that's wonderful thank you well, thank robin she's, yeah, she's well, a huge yeah, help. I do. i'll stop in and thank her because that's really nice since there's no po how come we don't have a postmaster in south deerfield no, i think they're, they're filling a the position or something or it's a vacancy i don't know somebody just died recently from that office I oh really? Like, I believe there was a recent death. I'm not positive, but it was somebody I thought I recognized from there. So. Uh, oh my gosh! Well, sure. all right. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, do is, you have a sense of a rough uh, when that's likely to happen? I mean, in the next couple of months, or we're hoping within like the month. If she submits it, I uh, so we finalized it last week. They she had to fill out a form. She had to be given approval, which obviously she, I would assume she'd do. They submit it in and then they just hear back from, you know, the higher ups. And then if that's the case, I'd like to think within the month, because obviously we had to tell them 10 weeks prior to which I had we'd selected Founders Day as the date. So right. within the month. OK, this is the government. I don't know. All right. So this would only be a one day. <laughs> this would only be a one day thing, Kelly. No, so it would go live officially from that date, but you could request the stamp whenever. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. We yeah, could get like pre stamped things. envelopes and we yeah. could put those in a time capsule. People could go in and request that stamp, be yeah. put on their envelopes. Excellent. I, okay. uh, I had another idea along the same lines, and I think it was Marie's idea get the kids to write a letter to themselves. Then you could stamp it, and then in 50 years, when they open the time capsule, they can read the letter that they have posted to themselves. You can mail them. <laughs> uh, Kelly, do you have you have elementary kids? What class? What class would do would be the right age group for writing a letter to themselves? Which this is are we talking like third grade or second grade? Uh, well, if you want, I will maybe fifth or sixth if you want fairly readable but um <laughs> second or third i mean <laughs> i have a second grader i mean i don't know if you'd make out everything but what do you mind reaching out to the teachers because i i know with mcas that they there's not a lot of wiggle room for projects and schedules and stuff mm -hmm. but so i did reach out to the second grade my son's second grade class about doing something for the time capsule she said sure but i think it's gotten forgotten and then I know Marie was working. I had actually lined Marie up with the principal and she was interested in maybe taking group shots in front of the cake for the time capsule and things like that. So there's that going on too. Well, those would be oh, good. perfect. Especially perfect. the kids. Yeah. I, I, like I said, any opportunity we have to bring in the kids, we need to bring in the kids. Mm -hmm. I can ask the, the second grade teacher again to see about writing letters or maybe even the sixth grade teacher. Yeah. See if, see what, what age group would be interested and then we can work on it. I think it'd be cool as hell to actually write a letter to yourself and be able to stamp it with the stamp and put it in the time capsule. I think it's very cool. It's so, well, I have a, I have a meeting with the, uh, vice principal of the high school on Thursday. So I can clarify the program schedule with him or okay. firm it up, get it on their schedule. And the, the other thing with having it at the frontier is that the, the frontier itself will advertise on their webpage that there's gonna be these talks. Good. So that'll go, that'll go out to the parents and stuff as well. Okay. All right, that sounds Let's great. Say, uh, Peter, yeah. uh, Stan would like to say something. Oh, sorry, I, I, I'm not seeing Stan up on my screen, so. <laughs> I have a question. The scam, is it possible for it to leave 
the second grade, I mean, I'm in the post office in Gold Black to Mrs. Singleton's third grade class so that like my grandson's class can all write, do something and stamp it, or does, do they have to go to the town, I mean, to the post office and have it stamped? Or don't you know that answer? I don't know that answer. I think it's it can travel. I, I think that's the, up to Robin, though, what her availability is. She did mention that she could be available for an event. The kids could come stamp it. So I, I don't I think I need to know more once it's approved. We can kind of come up with like suggestions. And but I think she'd be open to any of that. I, I do, too. Stan, she was really uh, excellent to work with on multiple different things. So um, and she has been very cooperative. She's the one that brought this all forward um, yeah she mentioned this has been going on for a while now <laughs> well in fact if you don't mind i'm going to ask her next time i go to the old Diffie post office if it can travel like i, I mentioned mrs singleton mm -hmm. but that's the only kid yeah. I know right now um, okay, i think it's a wonderful idea just stan just make sure you say thank you to robin because she's really been good <laughs> oh yeah right I have an odd question. Does the stamp pen have any value in the postal system? It's just it like a, it's just a postmark of where it's been. Mm -hmm. It's not like a forever yeah. stamp or anything like that. And, right. and eventually we can have the actual stamp, but they have to do something to it. And then okay. we could put that in a time capsule or something if we wanted yeah. to. Um, okay. But. Well, the reason you have to have what they said you had to put on that stamp is that's an official cancellation stamp for the post office. Yeah. So they'll probably have to, to yeah. put a naked through it or something or other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you, do you okay. need a budget for envelopes? If you're going <laughs> to approach the school, you might need a lot of envelopes. Yeah. yeah that's something that we can talk about is yeah. if we want to get a whole bunch of stamped envelopes. Okay. Again, that's little money. It goes a long way. Yes, so don't no, worry about that. Not. I'll be happy. We got yes. between what Chris is doing for Friends of Deerfield and what we have in the bank already, we got plenty of money to handle these really little things that will make a huge difference. So don't just make a list. You need envelopes. We can go buy a few thousand. No big deal. Already. Um Next meeting is the 27th of February. Everybody yes. have that down on the calendar. Um, and, uh, does everyone feel comfortable going to the 27th? Do we need to have any subcommittee meetings or work group meetings? I know the parade, obviously the parade committee's meeting, but um, I'm just wondering, Peter, you feel comfortable about following up with everything for the schedule? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's really up to me. I've been it's I've been contacting the people to you know okay make make a committal and they're they're there. Uh, I've got a couple more people on the line that I may bring in and we can put other talks in. Um, and uh, Kevin Sweeney's talk is in October, and I'll probably finish up with one in November. So okay. Well, I, I, I know Tim just wasn't ready to come tonight, but it, we'll just have to try to get him to uh, commit to a weekend in the fall for that, um, what he was going to do so we can get it on the calendar. Yeah. Because I think people will really look forward to that. I think that will be very exciting. I, I think one of the things, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because um, the, there's a uh, one of the things that PVMA is planning to do is to write a fairly large grant to deal with all of the um, oral histories and stuff. So uh, it, it'll continue on into the future. And that, that I think that's very positive. Thank you. So, um, well, if, if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second it. No, you got to make it. <laughs> got to make it first. We'll make it. We'll make it. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll make it. All right. I'll second. And I want to thank Chris. Thank you for so much, Chris, for tuning in. Stan also, for sure. Yes. Yeah. And all the support you guys have given us, too. Yes. That's great. I know. It, uh, it's all going to come together. It was a lovely, we started the year perfect with our Jubilee and 
I just feel like it was, we're doing really well, people. We shouldn't, we shouldn't worry. Just, Although it seems like a lot of communication. We'll be there. We'll get it done. All right, folks. Have a good one. Have a nice night. Bye-bye.